in the last lecture we had introduced the principal component method we had shown where it can be useful and how to do it basically but what we did not do is to rigorously see how we can actually get the principal components in the sense that the principal components are linear combination of the original variables but the combinations are only meaningful when we get the coefficients of these combinations the ages as we have defined before so what we'll do in today's lecture would be to look at how we can find the coefficients so the a matrix or the coefficient matrix can be defined and we can make the transformation from the x variables to the principal components y also be looking at some of the related results of principal components some of these we have already stated in the previous lecture and some of this will be stating and proving today and we'll see how these results are important in interpretation of the principal components let us look at some of the re relevant results of principal component method recall that what are the principal components these are linear combinations of the original variables so we had y1 is equal to a1 prime x where x is the set of original variables that's the first principal component y1 y2 is the second principal component given by a2 prime x so that overall we have the principal components y as equal to ax and a is the matrix that is unknown to us so once we know a we can get from x to the principal components remember that a is orthogonal and the way that we chose a is we maximize the variance of yj subject to the condition that yj prime yj is equal to 1 that's normalization and the condition that yj prime or rather aj prime ak is equal to 0 where k is equal to 1 to j minus 1 so when we are choosing yj we are looking at aj and we already have a1 a2 aj minus 1 and aj must be orthogonal to all of this that's what the second condition tells us how to do this we'll be looking at a result now let's begin by assuming that sigma is the dispersion matrix of x so it's the variance covariance of x with the variances of x along the diagonal of sigma now sigma is a positive definite matrix and hence it has non-zero or rather non-negative eigenvalues suppose we order these eigenvalues and write them as lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda m the largest being the first one and the smallest being the last one so these are ordered so you can get them in any order but then you order them okay put them in largest one first and the smallest one last as we go down the eigenvalue table okay and let p1 p2 pm be the corresponding eigenvectors so the p1 corresponds to lambda 1 p2 corresponds to lambda 2 and so on and so forth and we have a pair lambda j p j this is the jth eigenvalue eigenvector pair that we have there are several techniques by which you can get this we will discuss that later on but the important thing is that you remember that if the eigenvalues are distinct then the eigenvectors would be orthogonal to each other if the eigenvalues are not distinct then there may be a number of eigenvectors not unique which would be which would correspond to a given eigenvalue the eigenvalue which is multiplicity of greater than 1 in that case of course these eigenvectors can be would be linearly independent and once you have a linearly independent set of vectors you can always do an orthogonalization to get a set of orthogonal vectors so again as before we can get a set of orthogonal eigenvectors even if the original eigenvectors were not so so again i repeat that if you have distinct eigenvalues then you have orthogonal eigenvectors corresponding to each of them 
if they are not distinct then there would be multiplicity in certain cases and there would be more than one eigenvector in those cases but they can always be reduced to orthogonal eigenvectors so once we get this we can get a set of m orthogonal vectors what this result states is that the, the jth principal component is given by yj which is pj prime x where pj is the jth eigen vector. So, we get the elements of p j which are p j 1, p j 2, p j m and these act as the coefficients in the linear combination of the x's to yield y j. The variability of y j can also be shown to be equal to lambda j which is the eigen value corresponding to this eigen vector. So, as far as the j th principal component is concerned, its variance is given by the j largest eigenvalue and its is formed from the coefficients given by the corresponding eigenvector. And since the eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other, we can show that the covariance between y j and y k, the j th and the k th principal components is equal to 0. And you know that the choices may not be unique initially, but we can always reduce this to an orthogonal set of p's. Now, the proof of the result, a very well known result is that the maximum of the quadratic form a prime sigma a by a prime a is given by lambda 1, which is the largest eigen vector. In general, if you have any positive definite matrix B, then maximum of a prime B a by a prime a is the maximum or the largest eigenvalue of b. In our case, this turns out to be what we have here a prime sigma a by a prime a is equal to lambda 1. Now, since p 1 prime p 1 is equal to 1 and mind you p 1 is the eigenvector which corresponds to lambda 1, we have maximum of a a prime sigma a by a prime a is equal to lambda 1 and that is p 1 prime sigma p 1 because those are the eigenvectors and divided by p 1 prime p 1, but p 1 prime p 1 is 1. So, this is p 1 prime sigma p 1 and recall that the variance of y 1 is given by a prime sigma a and in this case a is replaced by p 1. So, we get the variance as the maximum value and that is equal to lambda 1. The first principal component has the largest variance and that is equal to the largest eigen value and the combination is given by p 1 prime x. So, your y 1 is p 1 prime x. Similarly, for k equal to 2, 3 up to m, we can do the maximum. Of course, we do not need to do it for the last one, but in each case now a would be chosen such that it is orthogonal to the previous p 1, p 2, p k minus 1 and then you maximize subject to this condition you get a prime sigma a by a prime a maximum of that under this condition would be equal to the kth largest eigenvalue which would be given by lambda k. Again with a equal to p k the variance of y k would be p k prime sigma p k and you know that sigma p k is equal to lambda k p k that is the usual relationship we have with its eigenvalue and eigenvector. So, if a is a matrix lambda is this eigenvalue and x is an eigenvector, then we have the relationship that a x is equal to lambda x and this result comes from there. And now p k prime p k is equal to 1, therefore the variance of y k becomes simply lambda k. Similarly, if you look at covariance between y k and y l, we have p k prime sigma p l is equal to lambda k p k prime again by the previous results into p l, but p k and p l are orthogonal to each other and therefore, the covariance becomes equal to 0. So, we now have the eigen values which gives us the variabilities of each of the principal component and we have the eigen vectors which gives us the leads us to the linear combinations for each of the principal component. And since the eigenvalues are ordered, we have the first principal component having the maximum variability and so on and so forth. 
Now, let us move to the second result. In this case, we have already stated this, that the total variability of the x's is equal to the total variability of the y's. How do you prove this? Let delta be the diagonal matrix of consisting of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda m. So, these are the eigenvalues on the diagonals and capital P be a matrix of eigenvectors P 1, P 2, P m. Then again a standard result tells us that sigma is equal to P delta P prime. So, any matrix which is positive definite can be broken up into its eigenvector matrix into the diagonal eigenvalue matrix into the transpose of the eigenvector matrix. So, that is what we have here. Now, remember the trace of sigma is basically the sum of its diagonals which are the variances. So, trace of sigma is the variances of the x's which is the total variability, but trace of sigma is also trace of p delta p prime and since we are looking at trace, trace of a b is trace of b a. Therefore, trace of p delta p prime is equal to trace of p prime p delta and p prime p being orthogonal this is i and this is equal to trace of delta and the sum of the diagonal elements of delta is the sum of the eigenvalues. So, the sum of the variances of x is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues and remember that the eigenvalues gives you the variances of the y's and therefore, this is equal to the sum of the y's. Now, how is this result important? If you look at say lambda j by lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda m, then this gives you the proportion of total population variance due to the j th principal component. So, you have lambda j on top which act actually is the variance of y j and you have the total variability. You can write it in terms of lambda you can also write it in terms of the x j's because this would be equal. Now, if you take the accumulation of this for the first say j principal component, so that would be lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus etcetera up to lambda j divided by lambda 1 plus lambda 2 up to lambda m. That would give us the total variability which would be obtained by looking at the first j principal component the first j principal component it, it explains maybe 90 percent or 95 percent of the total variability then we only take the first j principal components and stop. So, by looking at this cumulative proportion of total variability we can come to a judgment as to how much of the variability we should retain. Let us have a very quick look at what we get from result 1 and result 2. Result 2 tells us how many principal components to retain. So, that we have enough information garnered from the x's and result 1 tells us what these principal components are and what the corresponding variabilities are. So, together these two gives us how the principal components can be obtained and how they can be used. So, these are two major results that we have. We have a third result that we can look at which may be interesting. Now, sub we have y 1 is equal to p 1 prime x, y 2 is equal to p 2 prime x etcetera. These are the principal components. Then if you look at the correlation between the j th principal component and the i th variable that is given by p j i into square root of lambda j divided by the square root of sigma i i. Basically, sigma i i is the variance of the i th variable that is variance of x i. And what does this result actually tells us? It tells us the impact of the i th variable on the j th principal component. So, mind you the j th principal component is composed of all the m variables original variable. So, what does the what does individually each of these variables have on the given principal component? How does they affect the given principal component? Some of them may have a larger effect, some of them may have a smaller effect. As we saw in the last class that we had five variables and the first principal comp component was composed of two of the variables, I think it was protein and carbohydrates and this is how basically 
as we saw in the last class that there were five variables and the principal component first principal component came out as a function of two of the variables whereas the second one came out as a function of three of the variables so some of the variables do not occur in all the principal components some of them occur in a larger way in the sense that they have a larger influence and this influence can be measured by this correlation values here how do you prove this let us take ei as unit vector with 1 in the ith place and 0 elsewhere so that i can write xi as ei prime x and we can write covariance between xi and yj as covariance between remember xi we have just written as ei prime x so it's covariance between ei prime x and pj prime x that this is equal to ei prime sigma pj now sigma pj remember is lambda j pj therefore this covariance can be written as ai prime lambda j pj and if you take lambda j out it becomes ei prime into pj and what is ei prime it just has one single non zero element so it will be picking up the ith element of ej which is eji so now we have the covariance and similarly we can get the variance of yi as lambda i and the variance of xi as sigma ii so the correlation between yj and xi is covariance yj by yj xi by square root of variance of yj into square root of variance of xi and that is given by lambda j into eji divided by square root of lambda j square root of sigma i i and that leads us to the correlation again this correlation gives us the relationship between each of the variables with the corresponding principal component and helps us to identify how the principal components are formed this is not important as far as compiling or building the model is concerned getting the principal components is concerned getting the number of variables is concerned those are done by the first two results but this helps us to interpret the results it tells us which of the variables are more important in explaining the total variability because once it comes into the major principal components these variables major role in explaining that particular principal component and hence explaining the large chunk of the variability of the original axis so that way this results can be used to interpret the results we have from the principal components in today's module we had been looking at the general principal component model the m variable model and we saw that we how we can choose the principal components by choosing appropriately the coefficients of the linear combination we saw that these coefficients basically relate to the eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues of the sigma matrix and we also saw that the variances are given by the eigenvalues so once we get the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors we both get the proportion of variability explained by each of the principal components as well as the linear combinations themselves and we have also looked at some of the related results we have seen how the total variability of the original variables and the principal components are related we have also seen the covariances between a principal component and one of the variables so that this gives us the amount of or the effect of a particular variable on a particular principal component in subsequent classes we will be looking at the sample principal components and we will be looking at still further results.